In the wetlands of southwest United States, you would find the largest dragonfly in the world. The giant Dana, with the wingspan measuring up to 5 inches in length. Go back 300 million years and you find land and skies dominated by giant insects that would have dwarfed what you would find today, such as the giant dragonfly Meganeura, whose size could have rivaled some birds of prey of today. About 359 million years ago, in a time before the dinosaurs, the earth was a very different place, being much more humid and tropical than what it is today. Instead of the variety of biomes that we have now, the earth would have been much more uniform and much of the land would be covered by vast swampy forests. Instead of skies dominated by birds, you would see swarms of giant primitive insects such as Paleodictyoptera. On the ground, you will see a diverse array of primitive invertebrates and amphibians, such as the giant cast-sized millipede Arthropleura and the amphibious predator Proterogyrinus, which could have grown to be as long as an alligator. This period is known as the Carboniferous. The Carboniferous was a period of many significant biological and geological events one of which was the formation of the supercontinent Pangaea, which was formed by the collision of two of the largest land masses at the time, Eurasia in the northern hemisphere and Gondwana in the southern hemisphere. This period also saw the evolution of the amniotic egg, which was what allowed our ancient vertebrate ancestors to make the transition from a semi-aquatic lifestyle to becoming fully terrestrial. The earth was much more tropical and humid than today, and much of the land was covered with vast, dense, swampy forests, which is what gave rise to the name Carboniferous, which refers to the rich coal beds that were formed during that time period. The rate of coal formed during this period was some of the highest the earth has ever seen. In fact, there have been estimates that the rate of coal produced during this time period could have been up to 600 times higher than what it is today, and that up to 90% of the coal we burn today also comes from this time period. The reason for such high amounts of coal formed during this time period could have been because decomposing bacteria and fungi have yet to evolve the enzymes needed to break down tree bark, which means instead of decaying like trees do today, they would just build up on top of each other and over millions of years of pressure and heat would eventually turn into coal. The lack of decaying plant matter would also lead to high amounts of oxygen being left in the atmosphere. Today, when trees decay, bacteria are able to break down the wood by combining carbon and oxygen in the atmosphere to produce carbon dioxide. But in the Carboniferous, a lot of the plant matter was not being broken down, meaning less oxygen was being used to produce carbon dioxide and that would have led to the highest oxygen levels that the earth has ever known. Up to 60% higher than today, which may have what allowed arthropods to reach such gigantic sizes. Insects and millipedes do not have the same respiratory system that vertebrates do. Instead, they have many pores on their body called spiracles, which lead to a network of tubes called trachea. The air is able to naturally diffuse through these tubes, supplying oxygen throughout the body. There is, however, a limit how far oxygen can be naturally diffused through these tubes, which puts a limit on how big you can grow with this method of breathing. But the much higher oxygen levels of the Carboniferous period would have meant that oxygen could have diffused deeper into the trachea, which would have increased the limit on how big arthropods could have grown. With no reptiles, birds or mammals around, there was very little in the way of predators or competition, allowing arthropods to take their place as the dominant animals of the land and skies. One such group of arthropods belonged to the genus Arthropleura, 
a group of millipedes that would have roamed what is now Europe and North America 300 million years ago and existed throughout much of the Carboniferous up to the early Permian. The size of Arthropora was quite varied, with some of the smaller species growing to one foot in length, all the way up to the massive Arthropora armata, which may have grown to be over eight feet in length, and could have possibly been the largest land-dwelling arthropod to have ever existed. Because no mouthpiece of Arthropora have ever been discovered, it's difficult to say for certain if it was a carnivore or a herbivore. Gut contents with plant matter have been reported to be found from a species in Scotland. However, upon further study, it was found that the fossil was actually skin that had been shed by Arthropora, and that the plant was not from its guts. However, based on its enormous size and need for large amounts of nutrients, it's generally accepted that it was a herbivore. Crawling about the swampy forest floor, eating dead plant matter, something that modern millipedes do today. Without birds, arthropods were free to take to the skies without fear of predation. This combined with the record high oxygen levels led to some of the largest flying insects that have ever been discovered, the largest of which was Meganeura. Like modern dragonflies, Meganeura would have lived near bodies of water such as streams and ponds, and thanks to its large size would have filled the same role that birds of prey do today as apex predators of the skies swooping down on unsuspecting insects and amphibians and using its spiny legs to grab hold of its prey. Meganeura grew to have a wingspan of about two and a half feet, making it six times larger than the largest dragonfly today and was more in line with some smaller birds of prey, such as the kestrel. But Meganeura was not the only flying insects of the Carboniferous. Paleodictyoptera were a now extinct diverse order of winged insects. But what made Paleodictyoptera so bizarre was that it had six wings, with two being located on the front section of the thorax, something not seen in any insect today. Paleodictyoptera also grew to immense sizes, with some of its members growing almost as large as Meganeura. They were among the first ever terrestrial herbivores and were the first major group of herbivorous insects, using their long sharp mouth parts to feed on sap. Their large size could have been attributed to an evolutionary arms race with the flying carnivorous insects at the time such as Meganeura, and the high oxygen levels at the time would have accommodated for growth. During this time, invertebrates were also able to fill the role of land predator, such as the genus of giant scorpion, Pomona scorpius, with some species growing to about the size of a fox. Aside from being much larger than the scorpions of today, Pomona scorpius also had a few features rarely seen in its modern descendants. Modern scorpions are mostly nocturnal hunters, so have very small eyes and have instead evolved chemoreceptive hairs on their bodies for detecting prey at night. Pulmono scorpius had relatively large eyes, leading scientists to believe that it hunted during the day. The potency of Pulmono scorpius venom is not known, but it's probably safe to say that it was very potent. In modern scorpions, there's a general correlation between venom potency and claw size. Usually, scorpions with smaller claws have a more potent venom. This is because they rely on the venom to subdue their prey. Pomona scorpions most likely also relied on its venom, as its claws were relatively small. Its prey was also much larger than today's scorpions so its venom would have needed to be that much stronger to have any effect. So far, the invertebrates showcased grew considerably larger than what you would find today, but that does not mean that you had to grow large to be successful. Perhaps the most successful terrestrial animal of this time belonged to an order of cockroach-like insects called Blatoptera. I say cockroach-like 
because unlike modern cockroaches that produce egg cases, Blattoptera had long external oviposters, which they would have used to insert eggs into the soil one by one. The earliest record of modern cockroaches have only been found during the Cretaceous, about 155 million years after the Carboniferous. This lineage of proto-cockroaches would later split, giving rise to termites, mantises and modern cockroaches. Even though these insects were not true cockroaches, they were still built very similar. Having long antenna and legs built for running, it would have swiftly scurried around the forest floor, eating any dead plant and animals it could find. Another living fossil from the Carboniferous comes from an order of arachnids called the Opiliones, more commonly known as the Harvestmen or Daddy Longlegs. Known for having long spindly legs and small bodies, Harvestmen are perhaps the most ancient order of arachnids. A trait that separates them from modern arachnids is that instead of sucking up the liquids of its prey, harvestmen swallow solid chunks, a primitive trait that has been preserved for hundreds of millions of years. Fossils of harvestmen have been found dating back 305 million years ago, but what was so surprising about these fossils is that they looked modern. So modern, in fact, that the fossils could be put into the same category as living harvestmen. This means all major group of harvestmen have been around since at least the Carboniferous, making them a true living fossil and an example of evolutionary status. As mentioned earlier in the video, one of the most significant biological events during this time was the evolution of the amniotic egg which enabled certain four-legged vertebrates, also known as tetrapods, to live a fully terrestrial lifestyle, no longer having to return to the water to lay their eggs. The first amniotes likely evolved 340 million years ago from amphibian ancestors and later diverged into two different groups. The synapsids, that would later go on to include mammals, and the sauropsids, that would later go on to include birds and reptiles. Towards the end of the Carboniferous, an extinction event known as the rainforest collapse occurred, where the swampy rainforest suddenly collapsed due to the climate cooling down. This was likely caused due to glaciation and a drop in sea levels. The earth became much cooler and drier, which were unfavourable conditions, for the once dominant invertebrates and amphibians, as they had evolved to thrive in a much more humid and hotter climate. Giant invertebrates were hit especially hard, as the reduction in plant life meant oxygen levels drop to a level too low to sustain their large size, causing them to go completely extinct. Many of the survivors of the rainforest collapse were amniotes, as they held a considerable advantage over the amphibians for surviving a drier climate. Being able to lay eggs on dry land, the amniotes were able to diversify and filled niches that were once held by the amphibians. Six million years after the rainforest collapse, a new period called the Permian would begin, where the first stem mammals such as Dimetrodon would evolve.